And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is top, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now, the Whistler's strange story. Tough Guy. The white-thatched community sat quietly sweltering under a broiling South American sun as a battered taxi swerved off the highway in a cloud of thick red dust and clattered up the main street. Larry Sands sat huddled in the rear of the cab, wishing he was back at his desk in the offices of Pacific Airways in San Francisco. Nervously, he puffed on his cigarette, and his eyes shifted from one side of the street to the other, searching the faces, peering into doorways, probing the shadows. Finally, the ancient vehicle groaned to a stop in front of a neat two-story building. Larry Sands dismissed his driver and hurried into the hotel. The clerk looked up from his newspaper and smiled. Good afternoon, senor. I'm Larry Sands, Pacific Airways. He received my message. Oh, senor Sands, see, the room is ready for you. Welcome to Hotel Vergano. I am Fernando Peralta, the manager. It will be a pleasure to serve you, senor. Okay, how about taking me up to my room? Uh, your luggage, is this all you... Yeah, yeah. I will have someone take it upstairs. No. I'll take it myself. Come on. You wish to go to your room now, senor? Yes. But I thought perhaps after the long journey, the senor would care to visit the hotel. I bar. said I want to go up to my room. As you wish, senor. I will get the key. This way, senor. Across the patio. May I ask how long you intend to stay, senor son? Uh, two or three weeks. It depends. Oh, I thought perhaps you would be with us until the airfield was finished. Oh? You're surprised that I know, senor? <laughs> there is not one man, woman, or child here who does not know that you're here to supervise the building of the new airfield. How do you mean? Well, senor, workers will have to be hired, the land must be cleared, the buildings. All this means much to our town. Mm, I see. Uh, this place where you are to build the field, senor, I know it well. Uh, you have been there? Uh, not, not yet. During the war, that is, uh, the revolution of 1938, it was an airfield then. The government forces used it as, uh... Ah, oh, uh, here we are. Uh, you have uh, heard of the revolution of uh, 1938, senor Sanz? Huh? Yeah, yeah, I, um, I heard about it. There we are, senor. Is it not a beautiful room? Uh, the windows here overlook the plaza. Uh, there is a cooling breeze. I will open the windows a little more. No. I beg your pardon, senor. Lock them. But, senor, it is so warm Lock here. the windows. As you wish, senor. Tell me, um, you serve meals here? Of course, senor. Uh, there's the dining room downstairs. If you wish, I will see that a table is That won't is be necessary. I'd like to have my meal sent up to my room. And if anyone calls me, I'm not in. Is that understood? You are not in, senor? I don't want to be disturbed. No matter who it is, I'm not in. Is that clear? It is clear, senor, son. All right. Just be sure you remember... What's the matter, senor? 
The picture. Who put it there? Picture? What picture, senor? There. On the table. Where did it come from? I do not know, senor. I did not see it before. You're lying. Senor, I swear I have never seen this photograph before. I, uh... uh... Why? It is a picture of you, senor Sam. To my darling, Teresita, with all my love, Larry. Senor, you, you must believe me. I have no idea Call why this... Call that cab driver back. I'm leaving. Leaving? But, but, senor... You heard what I said. Find that cab driver. I'm getting out of here. Now. With the prologue of Tough Guy, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. But first, two don'ts for tire buyers that may spare you grief and save you dollars. One... Don't accept inferior second-line tires when you can now buy top-quality Lee Deluxe 4-ply tires for only $12.95 plus tax at signal dealers. And two... Don't pay over $12.95 for a top-quality tire because $12.95 will now buy a nationally advertised Lee of Conshohocken tire at signal dealers throughout the West from Canada to Mexico. Yes, you heard right. Only twelve ninety five for a top quality Lee Deluxe tire, backed by a one year road hazard guarantee. That's in the popular six hundred sixteen size. Other sizes proportionately low price. I'll admit that twelve ninety five sounds low for a top quality tire, and it is low. It's your signal dealer summer driving special on the same tires that only two weeks ago sold for fifteen twenty five. Tires with the same patented double-life cord construction that has made Lee outstanding among leading brands. So see how much signal dealers will offer you for your old tires. Now, see why more and more drivers who have compared quality and price agree. Today's best tire buy is Lee Deluxe 4-Ply Tire. Top quality for only twelve ninety five plus tax at signal dealers. And now, back to the Whistler. It was a mistake, wasn't it, Larry, coming back to South America? And your only thought now is to get away, as far away as possible. Yes, Pacific Airways will just have to send someone else to supervise construction of the airfield. Nervously, you pace up and down your room, waiting for the return of the hotel manager. He's been gone ten minutes. Surely he'd have found a cab by now. Quickly, you go to the window, look down into the street, almost deserted in the hot afternoon sun. Your eyes sweep across the plaza settle on a low white building at the corner, the cantina. It was called the Blue Grotto in those days, wasn't it, Larry? That was ten years ago in 1938. You were so very young, men, hungry for adventure. There was a revolution here, and the government was hiring pilots as fast as they could find them. You remember well, don't you, your first night here, sitting at the bar of the Blue Grotto. Pardon, senor. May I sit here? Sure, sure. Help yourself. You are Larry Sands, are you not? That's right. I saw you at the airfield this morning with the Comandante. You are going to fly with us, no? Why not? <laughs> My name is Antonio. Antonio Barra. Oh, so you're Antonio, huh? The Comandante has told you about me, huh? Yeah, you're pretty good. <laughs> is that all? You said you had the heart of a sentimental female, but in the air you were a terror. How about a drink? Uh, in a moment, senor, thank you. You also said you like to watch over your boys like a mother hen. About this, I shouldn't get sore. So? So we'll see. Have you ever been in combat, Larry? Nope. <laughs> but I've seen a lot of movies. <laughs> Tell me, I'm curious. Why do you come here to fight for my people? 
Your government's paying me 1500 bucks a month with a bonus for every ship I knock out of the air. Does that answer your question? I suppose it does. Yes. I don't know anything about politics. I don't know who's right, who's wrong in this fracas. If you tell me your side is right, that's good enough for me. I see. Does that... Uh, does that make you sore? No. When this rat race is over, I'll find me another war. There'll be one someplace. Always is. Larry, you know something? Hmm? You are, I think, not so very tough. What? <laughs> but I like you. I think also we will get along. Now you buy me that drink, huh? Job like this. It is not the ship we worry about, Larry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Larry, the next time you may not be so lucky. Sure, sure. Will you never learn, Larry? I have told you, when you are up there, look around. Look around all the time. Never stop yeah, for a yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I forgot it. Uh, if it hadn't been for you, those two would have blasted me right out of the sky. Thanks, pal. Thanks. You will learn, Larry. You will learn. Not fast enough. Five hundred bucks for every ship I knock down. I've been here a month now. Not a single plane to my credit. Ah, the money again. Always it is the money that is most important. You found anything better? Listen, Larry. Look, I'm in no mood for a lecture. Come on down to the village. I can stand a few drinks. All right, Larry. All right. <laughs> Big turnout at the grotto tonight. And what are they doing? Giving away pickle dishes? What do you mean, Larry? <laughs> Skiv it. Just an old American custom. Now, here's the table. All right. Hey, sweetheart, how about some service? Oh, good evening, senora. May I help you? Uh, si, bring... Teresita. Hello, Antonio. Teresita, it is good to see you again. Where have you been? How we worried for you. I thought you knew. Not a word we had of you. Suddenly, our little Teresita is gone. Our little mascot vanished. The boys are heartbroken. <laughs> oh, but there are so many other girls. <laughs> None like you. Oh, oh, no. Look at her, Larry. Is she not beautiful? It... Oh, pardon. Teresita, this is my good friend, Larry Sands. He is one of us now. Senor Sands. Hi, Teresita. You must tell me what happened to you. Why did you desert us? My... My parents, I... I have not heard from them since the war started. We are from the north, you know. And when the war began, we, we were separated. Yes, I know about that. Then you came here. A month ago, I heard from a friend. My father had been seen in Rio Norte. That is where I have been looking for my father. I... I did not find him. Oh, I am sorry, Chica. I am very sorry. Well, uh, now that everything's settled, uh, how about the drinks, sweetheart? Oh, yes, I, I'm sorry. I, I bring them right away. Brandy. The same, Chica. I will be back in a minute. Uh, it is sad, no? Yeah. I thought we'd never get our drinks. Hey, look, is she really the mascot of our outfit? She's more than that, Larry. I tell you something she does, Larry. She has pictures of all the pilots. She, she collects them. They are on the walls of her room. And every night she prays for us. So? Someday I think your picture will be there also. Sure, sure. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Still the big tough guy, huh? All right, Larry. We'll see. <laughs> The next few months are exciting ones, aren't they, Larry? Flying the battered government planes. Their raids deep into enemy territory, bombing missions, night patrols. 
and Antonio is always nearby, watching over you like a mother hen. You find yourself thinking more and more of Teresita, and you see her every time you go to the Blue Grotto. And then one evening, as you and Antonio enter the crowded cafe, she comes running towards you. Laurie, Laurie. Oh, hello, Teresita. Oh, you, hey, you did not come last night. And today I hear a pilot is missing. The, it is the Frenchman, right now. I did not know. I, I thought perhaps... You think it was our amigo Larry who is missing, eh? Well, I... Listen, don't you think I know how to take care of myself? Every time a plane gets knocked off or on her, right away everybody thinks it's Larry. Larry, I, I did not mean Sure, I... sure, sure, I know. I'm just a green kid. Four months without a single plane to my credit. Antonio and the rest of them treat me like a baby. Got to take care of a junior of upstairs. See that junior doesn't get into a jam. Oh, I'm you do not it. understand, Larry. It is because uh, I... Teresita, bring us the drinks. Uh, we will sit over here. Yes. Uh, right away, Antonio. Here, Larry. Sit down. Sit down. You know, you are not very smart, Larry. You are not very smart at all, I think. Look, what is this going to be? Another lecture? How can anyone be so blind, so blind? All right, all right. Get it off your chest. Antonio. What? Antonio, Pablo. What are you doing here? The commandante asked me to find you. Ruiz has been killed. Ruiz? But that is impossible. He came back with us this afternoon. I know. But they found him an hour ago in a ditch at the edge of town with a knife in his back. <laughs> A week goes by, and the Ruiz murder remains unsolved. While morning after morning you fly the dull patrol over the same low rolling hills bleached for the sun, following the same railroad track, the river, over the plateau, and back to the airdrome. Then one morning as you return to the field, you stop by the hangar office. Antonio is there with a half a dozen other pilots. Huh. Never saw a happier bunch of guys in my life. What's the matter, the war over? Larry, it has happened again. What now? We've lost another pilot. This time it was Kruger. He was found in the village this morning. Shot to death. Hello, Larry. Hiya, Teresita. Any of the boys around? A few over there. Is something wrong? Plenty. Commandante wants to give us a pep talk. We have to report back to the field right away. What has happened? Somebody's putting a finger on us, Terry. A week ago, it was Ruiz. Last night, Kruger. Tonight, they found Corelli in the plaza with his throat cut. <laughs> Gentlemen, gentlemen, we have lost three pilots, all of them murdered. In this morning's raid, we counted heavily on the element of surprise. But as you know, we lost five planes, five pilots. The revolutionists knew we were coming, and where? They know that our abilities in the sky are greater than theirs. So they send spies to murder our pilots on the ground, to inform them of our plans. I do not know how they identify us, but I must warn you to be extremely cautious. Remain on the airfield. If you must go to the village, go in groups. And do not wear the flying jackets. Nothing in your dress must indicate that you are pilots. Only in this way, perhaps you... Escape us, sir. Enemy bombers. Stay over the village. You rush out of the Commandante's office with the others and make for the hangars. You're at the edge of the landing strip when the first bomb hits. An instant later, the fighters roar over the runway, sweep the field with machine guns, and you dive headlong into the ditch. Again and again, the enemy bombers and fighters crisscross the field. And finally, it's over. You scamper out of the ditch, Antonio at your side. Two hangars have been completely demolished. A dozen or more planes caught on the ground, blown to bits. You stand there for a moment, listening to the drone of aircraft fading into the night. Then the only sound you hear is the crackle of the flames. 
This was the first time they attack us here. It is strange they choose this moment to do so. Yeah, I'm way ahead of you, Antonio. More than half our fighters and bombers on the ground. And the same number of pilots assembled in the commandante's office. Yes, it is indeed strange. A coincidence, no? But we will find out soon, Chico. Very soon. I know. Somebody's putting a finger on us, Antonio, but good. It's like I told Teresita tonight. Teresita? I... You spoke with her tonight? Sure, when I was yawning at the boys. I... Hey, wait a minute. Look, where's the matter? The village fires. Some of the bombs must have dropped on the village. A moment. You cannot go. You will be needed here. You're we... going to stop me, Antonio? No. No, I will not try. What are you going about? <laughs> go. Go on to the village. Maybe Teresita needs your help. Oh, and Larry. Yeah? Like I always said, you are, I think, uh, not so tough. Teresita. Teresita. Larry, what are you doing here? Maybe are you all right? Of course. Come in, come in. Went over to the Blue Grotto. It was closed. I got your address from the old woman across the street. Oh, I'm so glad you come, Larry. The raid, I was worried. You were at the field? Yeah. I saw the fires here in the village. I, I was worried about you. Oh, I... You were worried? About me? Why, Larry? I guess that's not so hard to figure out. Is it there, Oh, Larry. I guess Antonio had his peg right from the start. He teased you about the picture. Uh-huh. He said my picture be up there. For the rest of them. And, and will it be there? The cinch, sweetheart. The cinch. <laughs> During the next few days, there's great activity at the airbase. The airfield is cleared, the hangars rebuilt, and again you take to the air with Antonio. Faithful Antonio, the mother hen at your side, fighting off attacks, launching wild, desperate raids into enemy territory. And then on the fifth day comes surprising news. News of a government victory in the north. All talk of enemy spies seems to be forgotten. And the following night, there's a celebration at the Blue Grotto. A dozen or more pilots are there, the laughing, happy villagers, and Teresita by your side. Only Antonio is missing. And as the evening wears on, you notice the unship glances toward the door. Finally, the door bursts open, and Antonio stands in the doorway. His clothes are torn with a deep red gash across his forehead, and his right arm dangles loosely at his side. You watch the blood drip slowly from the fingertips as he makes his way across the room. Antonio. What's happened to you? Very Sita. I wish to speak with you outside. Antonio, how long? Now, wait a minute. Please, Antonio. Larry. Wait here. All eyes in the room are on you, Larry. For a moment, you stand motionless. And slowly, you cross the room toward the door. As you reach it... (laughs) When you step into the street, you find Antonio standing over Teresita's body, sprawled out on the sidewalk. He looks at you with a blind, vacant stare, and the gun slips from his hand. At the same instant, a police car screeches to a stop at the curb. And you throw yourself at an Antonio. Antonio! You killed Teresita! Kill you! Kill you! Senor! Senor! Un momento! Stop it, Senor! Stop it! Me, go up! Go up! Can I search you? Stop it! That's better. Larry. Larry, I'm sorry. Believe me, my friend. Larry! You killed her! Listen to me, Larry. Tonight, on my way here, I was attacked. He tried to kill me, like the others. 
I killed him instead. What? In his pockets, we found two photographs. Photographs, Larry. Yours and mine. But tell us, see the white... Photographs. They were the ones we had given. Don't you see? She was an informer for the revolutionists. These pictures, this is how the assassin was able to pick our men. We, you and I, Larry, we were next on the list. You're lying. You're lying. Please, senor. We have been to her room. There were papers there, letters. No, no, I can't believe it. The pilots who have already been assassinated, their pictures, as well as yours and Senor Antonio, they were missing from her collection. <laughs> no, we did not come here for Senor Antonio. We came for Teresita Madrones. She was a spy for the revolucionistas. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, a reminder to you drivers who have not yet taken advantage of this month's free signal safety service. I'm referring to the free inspection of your radiator and cooling system being offered by almost 2,000 signal service stations throughout the West from Canada to Mexico. With summer just ahead, you'll want to be sure that your radiator is ready and able to keep your car cool when the weather is hot. Supposing your radiator has become clogged with sludge and rust, then now is the time to have your signal dealer restore its efficiency with his special radiator cleaning compound. Maybe your radiator has developed pinpoint leaks. If so, you'll be glad to know that signal dealers have radiator sealer, which stops leaks quickly. And even though your car is brand new, remember it's just good business to keep rust preventive in the radiator to guard against future corrosion. So take the first step toward trouble-free summer driving now. Stop at your neighborhood signal station this week for your free radiator inspection. There's no better way to see for yourself the more thorough, more conscientious service cars get at signal service stations. And now, back to the Whistler. Yes, Larry, that was ten years ago. You were a hired pilot flying for the government forces. And the revolutionists were murdering your flyers on the ground. And Teresita, little Teresita, whom Antonio executed as a spy. Now, as you stand at your hotel window, your thoughts are not with the airfield you came down here to build. No. As you stare across the sun-drenched plaza, you realize you never should have come back to South America. And then the footsteps along the hotel corridor bring you back to the present. And to the thought uppermost in your mind. Escape. All right, all right. It's about time the fool found a cab. Listen, how long does it take to... You have a visitor, Senor Sands. Do you remember me, Larry? Uh, Antonio. Ten years is such a long time, but I have not changed much, huh? Well, what do you want? Romero, you will leave us alone. Senor Sanz and I have some matters to talk about. It will not take long. See, and about the, um, you still want me to call? There is no other way. Yes, call the police. We will be waiting. The police? Of course. Killing is a matter for the police, is it not? I don't know what you're talking about. You should not have left your photograph behind, Larry. After you left here, I think about you. I think about you often. I show your picture to people who once were revolutionaries. They know everything. Then I wait for you to come back. No, no, look, Antonio, if you let me explain... What? You could not kill the enemy in the air. So you, my brave little pilot, 
You send the assassin to kill us, your friends, on the ground. Oh, Antonio, listen to me. You I became can... frightened that night at the airfield when I told you we would soon find the spy. To save yourself, you decided to make poor Teresita, who loved you, look like this spy. You put the letters in Teresita's room, stole the pictures from her. Now, look, I, I was just a kid. I didn't know what I was doing. I wanted dough. They gave me 3000 for every man. Now, listen, Antonio. No, I... you listen to me. You're not only a traitor to my country, you're a traitor to your own. The ones you sold out to are the same ones who are plotting revolutions and the overthrow of free governments all over the world. It no, was wait. clever of you to give your own picture to the man who tried to kill me that night, Larry. Ah, uh, yes, it was clever. It fooled me for a long time. Antonio, no! Your life, my friend. The life I have saved so many times. Now I must take it. <laughs> Tough guy. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil, and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were David Ellis and Harry Bartell. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen, with story by Slick Goodlin and Bob Coston, and music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery over most of these stations, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint, as well as The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>